Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I see that I have uh, a few guests, so welcome, welcome to yet another grade 12 English first language uh, with Andy Swa Maka. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, I am unmuted. Hello, hello, everyone. So I hope everyone is well today and having a beautiful afternoon. Uh, so welcome again to your grade 12 English first additional language class with Andy Swa Maka. So today we are going to continue with our, um, or rather, start with our short uh, or shorter transactional text, okay? Uh, but you will remember that we didn't finish yesterday on adjectives. So we are going to touch a bit on that, okay? And then uh, move straight then to the shorter transactional text uh, types, okay? Right, but just a small announcement before uh, we are moving slots all right so um tomorrow uh, starts so tomorrow uh thursday and friday uh so we will be live at 9 a.m that will be 9 a.m 9 in the morning hopefully you guys wake up early enough okay to um to join the lesson so we will be starting much much earlier uh, starting from tomorrow. Okay, so please do not oversleep. Do not go to bed at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, make sure that you are bright and early and brave to start uh, another day uh, with an English lesson. Okay, right. So back to today's business. Okay, so yesterday you will remember that, uh, okay, we did adjectives and adverbs. Okay. And um, so I should have started with this slide. So this was just uh, the takeaway message from yesterday that we use adjectives to describe nouns and pronouns. Uh, adjectives can come before nouns or after linking verbs, linking verbs such as scenes or uh, sound or smells. Okay, so you seem confused. Uh, so those would be our linking verb. So we use adjectives to, um, to describe these nouns or uh, pronouns. And with adverbs, um, we use to describe verbs, we use to describe adjectives or other adverbs. And they're often, but not always, made by adding ly to the adjective. Okay, so um, I will just go back a bit there. All right, so this was just the last part uh, that I wanted to emphasize now with regards to adverbs and adjectives when we are writing. Okay, so uh, when we are writing about people's behavior in different situations. So, um, uh, so we use adjectives and adverbs to describe people and the way they do things in situations such as job interviews, presentations and social situations. So just things to remember, use adjectives to talk about people's personalities and adverbs to talk about the way people do things. So it's the how, okay? And uh, so if we look at the example there, Eduardo is a very friendly person. He never speaks badly about anyone. So, um, so as we can see, friendly person. So that's an adjective uh, that describes a noun or the noun person. And uh, the next sentence, he never speaks badly about anyone. So an adverb would be badly, which describes the verb speaks. Okay, so how does he speak? He speaks badly, okay. Um, all right, so uh, second point, we use very, okay, uh, to strengthen uh, statements and not very 
in negative statements. Okay, so as an example there, so the first one, uh, when we want to strengthen statements, so we would say, Sadie is a very serious student. So that is to strengthen a statement. But the second one, if you want to be polite, not be too direct or frank about what you think. Uh, so you would say, our neighbors do not speak English very well. Okay, they don't speak it very well. Okay, so as you can see there, so we use that to, um, to be more polite, okay, in negative statements. Okay, so that was the last bit of our adjectives. So I hope everybody is uh, clear um, about the use of adjectives and the adverbs, when to use them, uh, when uh, not to use them. Okay, right now, moving on to writing. So we said we will um, work on shorter transactional text today. Okay, so we will focus on category A. Okay, so as you see, so I did explain, so we've got shorter transactional text. So we've got advertisements, uh, invitation cards, flyers, posters uh, as part of category A and then category B uh, would be diary entry, uh, postcards and category C would be instructions and directions, okay? So you need to be familiar with all these types of texts, okay? Under shorter transactional text. So today we are going to focus on advertisements and invitation card under category A, okay? And then tomorrow we will do the rest, uh, category B and ca category C, okay? Right, you know we all always have steps, okay? So how do you go about writing or putting together an advertisement or an advert in short. So step one, you choose your text, okay? Will it be an advertisement? Will it be a flyer? Will it be a poster? Uh, step two, you plan your topic. Uh, step three, you write a draft of your text and edit. And the last step will be writing your final text. Okay, so whenever we write, we follow the same steps to make sure that you produce a fine piece of writing. Okay. Okay, so planning your text, your text. So uh, when we plan, you know, we uh, can use in this case, um, uh, mind map. Okay, planning very important. Uh, so as you can see, okay, so we've got in the middle, the topic, and then you will add your ideas. Okay. All right, and then, um, okay, so just looking at the types of uh, writing, okay, we do have formal and informal, so this is just a recap. Um, so in formal writing, so you will have a formal register, uh, so that's where the expressions are formal and are polite. Um, for example, you are invited to attend a celebration in honor of Andi um, or you would say it's a great pleasure to meet you, for example. Um, informal writing will have an informal register when expression is informal, chatty and conversational. Okay, so please come to a party, for example. And then words are written in full in a formal text. There are no contractions, remember no abbreviations, so you, we can't be writing ASAPs here, okay? So you don't abbreviate. So we write words in full. And um, when it comes to informal writing, you can certainly uh, uh, use contractions, uh, so that is perfectly fine with um, informal writing. And then when it comes to sentences, we write sentences in full. Make sure that the grammar is correct. We don't use any slang when it comes to formal writing, okay? Um, and then sentences in, uh, in, in an informal piece. Um, so we 
um, we're welcome to use colloquial language. Uh, so you are, yeah, so it's more relaxed type of writing. And then uh, use of a third person in formal writing, okay? And um, in formal writing, we use, uh, we can use the first person, okay? I, we, um, and then lastly, formal writing, we use a passive voice and um, in informal writing, we may use the active voice. Okay. So we see more people coming. So the uh, Lissidi, our usual guest is making his way. Uh, so we will continue. Uh, welcome Lissidi, welcome. You are 10 minutes late. You are 10 minutes late, but we're glad to have you, so welcome. Okay, so those would be your common differences, okay, between formal and informal writing, okay? Right, so advertisement. So the features of advertisement, so the aim is to sell products or service, okay, when it comes to advertisements. Um, um, so you would um, use electronic media, you would use uh, cinema or SMSs to cell phones and print media when you uh, advertise, okay? So we'll, I will just take you through now the steps that we, okay, there's Will as well. Let me just let him in. Welcome, Will Nyati. All right, so now we are focusing on invitation, writing and invitation. Oh, sorry, uh, excuse me, they're writing an advert. So that's the first one under category A that we are going to focus on, okay? So step one would be to choose a text step and there's our topic. So our topic there, uh, your family runs a home business making products such as toys, ethnic jewelry and clothing. Write out the advertisement to promote the sale of one of the product products to tourists. And you should include the following in your advertisement, a brand name, so you come up with a brand name, slogan, details of the product, and where to find it, okay? So we don't include illustration. Remember, words are power. So you provide as much information as possible rather than uh, pictures when you put together your advert or your advertisement. Okay, so we've got our topic there. Now it's time for planning. Okay, so we've got the topic. So wooden toys and the text type is advertisement. Uh, so, uh, so the first idea would be, obviously you need to have the name of, uh, of the brand and that is Toys for Africa. And uh, think of a slogan. And uh, so this, the, the learner there has decided to dream delight, dream Africa, okay? So that would be your brand and your slogan. Number two, what kind of toys are we selling? So you need to give more details on the product that you're selling when you're advertising, right? Okay, so there we've got uh, kinds of toys, African wild animals, African theme puzzles, and then... Um, so they made, so you describe your product as well. Uh, so the more detail, the, the better, but it has to be concise when you are uh, writing an advertisement. So they're made from wood, hand painted, lovingly crafted. So that interesting language you use, okay? And then, uh, so who's, uh, are we, who's the product aimed at? So it's aimed at uh, three to six um, uh, year olds, um, and then treasured position, okay? So you're jotting down the ideas for your advert there, sold at craft markets, and then you provide your contact details, all right? 
And then we've got our planning there done and dusted. Okay. Then how would our first draft look like? So there's our first draft. Um, yeah, so Toys for Africa. So that would be uh, the heading. So it would be the, the, the name of your uh, company or your brand name uh, with a slogan, take a piece or take home a piece of Africa for your letter one. Okay, so uh, they have mentioned the giraffe, hippo, lion, so all types of uh, animals there that they will be making. And then you are adding or giving detail or a description of your product. Um, so as you can see, we are editing here the draft. So make sure that your spelling is proper. Okay, so that uh, your piece is presentable to the audience or to the reader. Okay, so that's our draft there. And how would our final draft look like? So there it would be. So we have our heading, Toys for Africa, big, bold. You cannot mistake it, you know, for any other thing. You can see that it is, um, you can tell that that would be a brand name. So it's got to be visible, okay? And um, it's got to be um, in your face um, and quite obvious to the audience. And then a persuasive sentence, so that would be your slogan, something that, okay, attracts the eye, something that is uh, uh, catchy, all right? So always think of a catchy phrase when it comes to, um, when it comes to advertisements, okay? Um, I know others love using puns as well. So you may use a pun. All right. And then, um, so we've got information about the product. Very important uh, because people need to understand exactly what it is that you are selling. So you describe, okay, uh, what that product is. So lovingly crafted, handmade, colorfully painted, easy to hold, wooden toys. Be very smart in your word choice as well. Remember, you don't have a lot of words um, uh, that I use here. So you can write, I think it's between 80 and 100, but less than 100. Um, yeah, so it's less than uh, maximum, in fact, 100 words. So you can't now be writing an essay. Okay. Each animal has its own individual personality and has moving parts to make it more fun to play with. These toys will delight any child and become a treasured position. Beautiful, well um, chosen words that really capture uh, what the, this uh, or these toys are and um, how they look and how they feel. All right, and then the contact details there, visit us at the African Market in Cape Town or call James at the number given. Okay, so you've got your uh, slogan there, uh, Dream Delight, Dream Africa. Hmm? Nice and catchy as well. Okay, and uh, don't forget to add your word count always, okay? So we can see that they have 80 words. So it's got to be between 80 and, uh, yeah, so around 80 to 100, but definitely less than 100 or not more, or no more than 100 words. Okay, so that is how our advert uh, would look like. All right, so have a good look at it. Okay, so you do need to produce something uh, like that when you are writing your exam, okay? Or when you're practicing at home. Okay, any questions? Are we good? Are we clear? All right. Now, okay, so just screen grab this, okay? This is just a, a practice that you can do at home. So the first one, you choose any one of the two. Your neighbor is a businessman who has developed a new hair care product. He wishes to advertise the product in a national magazine. He has 
uh, ask you to write the advertisement. So you need to write this advertisement. Do not include illustrations. So remember information. So you've got to have your uh, you've got to have your brand name at the top. Have your persuasive statement uh, below that. Um, list your products or products, um, and then give a, a concise description of your product. Okay, and then give details, contact details, um, just uh, any information that uh, a buyer would need. Where do I get this product? Okay, and do not forget your slogan. All right, so the second one, you help your family run a small family business, but sales have recently decreased. So people aren't buying uh, as much as you would like them to buy. So now your father has asked you to write an, adver an advertisement that will promote the business. So you can choose any of the two. Please do jot this down or screen grab if you can. All right, so, and please practice at home. I'll give you one minute to just jot down, okay? Just write down, okay? And just remember that you need to um, be very creative when it comes to word choice, okay? And um, it's got to be short. Uh, rather concise, meaning it has to have all the information that is required, but in a short format or in a short um, uh, uh, description. Okay, so we've got between 80 and 100 words that we need to use. Okay. Yeah, and um, just another thing. So the main reason why... Um, so we find that uh, many candidates uh, or many learners uh, do poorly in these questions. And the reason is that they don't write in full sentences. So, or, or they would use, um, you know, less than uh, um, 80 words and fill the, the page with pictures and illustrations. So we don't want that. So avoid these, these pitfalls, okay? So just make sure that you follow the guidelines. Okay, make sure that you follow the guidelines. So we said between 80 words and 100. So you just make sure that you read clearly the instructions. If it says between 80 and 100, make sure that it is between 80 and 100. Okay. All right. So hopefully you have uh, written down the activity so you will practice it. Okay. After. All right, great stuff. So, um, so remember, the the aim is to sell the product or service, okay? And then uh, think of your audience. So, who do you want to advertise to? Who will be the end user of this product or service, okay? And think which platform am I going to advertise this? Will it be electronic media? Uh, will it be cinema? Will it be? Will I be sending bulk SMSs? You know those SMSs we hate, and we ask, "Where on earth did you get my number here?" Uh, will you be using that, perhaps, uh, or will you be using print media? So you need to have those things in mind. Okay. All right, so we will move over to the second um, uh, type of text under category A. So it would be an invitation. So there's a, a nice invitation there. Uh, so the features of an invitation are you will uh, use formal language, okay, when you send out an invitation. So use formal language and briefly provide information that guests need to know about the event, okay? Don't write an, an entire uh, paragraph or an essay, so it needs to be um, concise. Again, make sure that all the necessary information about the event, uh, event is in the invitation so that your um, 
so that your guests don't or are not left wandering. So uh, your date, for example, the time, the place where it will be. And perhaps if you are, um, uh, maybe if you uh, prefer that people dress a certain way, also add that detail. Do you want them to dress formally or informally? Um, so you may certainly do that, okay? All right, so we welcome you, we welcome you. Uh, all right, so you catch us while we are right in the middle of uh, the lesson, so you will have to just recap. All right, um, yeah, so invitation. Now how, okay, so now how do we, go about putting together an invite or an invitation. So we follow the same steps, okay? First one, you will choose the text type and then there your topic will be, you've been asked to invite guests to your school's prize giving function. A former principal of the school will be the guest speaker. So you write out the invitation card you will send to the guests. Note, do not include illustrations or drawings, okay? I know I'm sounding like a broken record here, but please do not be tempted to, to make your invitation look uh, beautiful or, or, you know, just focus on what is required, the basics. So that would be the detail, the information. Make sure that the information is right before now you can start uh, um, thinking of, um, illustrations or drawings, okay? Focus on the information given, okay? Right, so that is our topic. So how would we go about writing or putting together an invitation? Okay, so step one, so we're planning it there. So the topic would be uh, in this case is school prize giving function. So our text type, okay, is uh, the invitation card. So the name of school must be at the top, okay. Introductory sentence. Uh, so you will just write a sentence or two. Let's celebrate hard work of learners, for example. And then info and heading. So you've got the details of the event, all right. So, okay, we've done our planning. Um, okay, so we know exactly what we are going to put in our invite. Okay. Right, okay, so as you can see, we've got LIP school prize giving, big, bold. The minute that uh, the uh, receiver or the, the person opens that they can see what the invite is about. Okay, so it reads, uh, dear parents, let us celebrate the hard work that has been put in by learners for the year. You are invited to attend the 2013 prize giving. Schools, choir and dance groups will be adding their talents to make the celebration even more enjoyable. So here, this is our first draft to make sure that we make sure that everything is proper. So make sure that your grammar spelling, all the information that needs to go into the inv invitation is there. It is clear, okay? Then we see our final draft there. So it reads the school prize giving, that's the heading. We've got the greeting. Um, and then, uh, so just a small paragraph uh, to say what the invitation is about. Uh, then we've got information presented in a list format with a column. As you can see, we've got the guest speaker, date, time, venue, dress code, if you wish, and then RSVP, okay? Right, and then we have our word count there. So remember, look at the um, look at what uh, the instructions say with regards to your word count. If they are between 
65 and 80, make sure they're within that. Um, not more than, not less than, okay? Make, uh, make sure. All right, and then, so just have a look. So just jot down. So you have two topics to choose from. Uh, so the couple living next door to you has been married for 50 years. They're planning to celebrate this by hosting a formal function. You have been asked to prepare the formal invitation. Write the invitation that will be sent to the families and friends. So that's the first one that you do. And uh, the second one, uh, your school's life orientation teacher was invited or has invited a well-known personality to give a motivational talk to the learners at your school. A chairperson of your school's uh, learner, of your school's, of the learners, a representative council of a neighboring school. So you write that invitation. Okay. So just uh, jot that down. So I would like you to practice it. Okay. So remember, we use formal language. Uh, welcome to Bani. So we use formal language, okay, when we write an invitation, and the invitation must briefly provide the information the guests need to know about uh, the event to which you are inviting them. So just to make sure that you've got all that, okay. So remember to not fall into uh, uh, that, you know, the mistakes of writing illustrations, okay. All right, so just make sure. Okay, all right, so just have a look at your exercise, jot that down. If you have any questions, uh, now is the time to ask. Okay, I'll give you just one more minute to have a look and just uh, have a think on uh, how you would go about putting this invitation together. Okay, so just something to, re to remember when it comes to the format. So the way information is organized, so it's so that the different, um, so each text basically will have its own format. So you just need to know uh, the right format for each, okay? And just on the steps, uh, when you are writing your, uh, or when you're putting together, um, either your advertisement or, um, or your invitation. So just to remember to just uh, understand exactly what the question requires of you, okay? And then choose the text type that you know the, form the format of and um, the text that you have the most to write, okay? So it always, helps to do that. Just do something or choose a text that you are quite familiar with. Because remember, in an exam mode, or during the exam, you don't have the luxury of time. So you literally need to think on your feet. You need to um, um, make sure that you have the required information available. So choose something that you are very familiar with. Okay. And uh, so more importantly, Focus your attention on the topic you've chosen. So now we can't now, um, you know, uh, in our planning, have an invitation. And then when you produce your final draft, it's an advert. Okay, so you need to be consistent. So if our topic um, and if our text, if, we, if we've chosen the advert or if we've chosen an invitation, uh, the planning needs to uh, be in accordance with uh, the text that you've chosen, okay? The draft needs to be uh, the same as what you've planned, 
okay? And the final draft obviously also needs to be the same or similar to, uh, to the topic. It needs to be similar to your draft or your first draft as well, okay? Um, okay, so just when it comes to language style and editing, check your grammar, spelling and punctuation, make sure that those are correct. Uh, check that you've chosen a variety of words that are appropriate for your topic. Remember, it needs to be catchy, um, especially if you are uh, doing at or putting together an advert. It needs to be catchy, um, so you need to uh, just make sure that um, everything is clear um, um, and just uh, make sure that you use that creative language, okay, to make your piece appealing. To your audience. So it's uh, also important uh, to show, as I've said, that uh, you've edited your draft, show the drafted work, okay? And uh, so just think about the purpose and audience of the text type you have chosen. This will guide the register you use in a format, okay? So it will uh, guide whether, you know, you must use your uh, you must use informal language or you must use formal language, okay? So, um, yeah. So, different texts have uh, different audiences, okay? For example, um, a poster is designed to be seen by general public. A diary is designed to, uh, you know, to, uh, to only be read by the writer. So, you just need to be... Uh, cognizant or be aware of the fact that of the you know of the fact, fact that okay I'm writing to this audience or this is maybe my personal diary so I'm writing to myself so um, yeah so just to be uh, be mindful of those things okay All right so just things to remember. Okay, so when it comes to uh, features, so know the features of each of your texts, okay? Um, so remember, for example, your advert, so it needs to uh, just provide, it needs to have that, um, it needs to have that brand name, it needs to have your slogan, you know, and you need to understand the audience as well that you are uh, sending to what type of medium am I going to use? Am I going to um, uh, make an SMS or am I going to use print? Okay, so in an, in, in an invitation, uh, what register am I going to use? It's going to be formal, obviously. Do I have all the details? Okay, what are the details that need to go into an invitation? So just be aware of uh, those features, all right? And uh, secondly, understand the topic that you've chosen, okay? Um, so uh, it needs to reflect in your draft, in your first draft. Um, it needs to reflect in your planning. Um, it needs to reflect in your final draft. So there needs to be consistency there, okay? Show evidence of planning, which I mentioned as well. The marker needs to see that there are marks that go towards that. So make sure that there is evidence of planning and each point in your plan must be relevant to the topic, okay? I have been going on and on about that as well. You use these points in your text, consistency again, okay? And also just uh, understand uh, the purpose of each writing, okay? And um, understand uh, the the audience, okay, that'll be of your advertisement, of that uh, invitation card you selling, you are sending, or of that poster uh, you're putting together. So when it comes to advertisement, your layout, it must be eye-catching, okay? So uh, a person must just, you know, whenever, when they have a look at it, uh, so it's got to be uh, appealing, okay? It's got to be, uh, they've got to want to read it. Okay, or we'll see more detail and see what it really is about. Make the information easy to understand, okay? And when it comes to your invitation card, 
uh, if there has to be a clear heading and the details of the events must be listed uh, below using columns. So remember, uh, so what we showed there, have all the details, all the necessary details. And um, yeah, so when it comes to your texts in general, choose words carefully and make your text interesting, okay? By creative use of words, okay? And ideas must link to the topic. So I've mentioned that as well, all right? And um, yeah, so the last one, make sure you have checked and corrected. So that editing, extremely important as well. So that is, uh, yeah, that would be the story of the advert and um, invitations. So do I have any questions, guys? Is there anything you would like me to clarify? Uh, we've got five minutes left. So is everything clear there in terms of the features of an invitation, features of uh, an advert? So just let me know if you are, um, yeah, so if you would like uh, me to explain or just to repeat something that I've mentioned. Okay, I will just give you one minute. One minute. Okay, I don't see any. All right. Okay, so that was just, uh, yeah, so that was your category A. All right, so we will cover flyers and posters um, in the coming weeks. Okay, so, um, so that would be category A. Um, so tomorrow, we will focus on uh, category B, that will be your diary entry. Um, and cat. Uh, Category B, that's diary entry and your postcard. And then um, um, and then category C will be instructions, writing how do you write out instructions and directions as well. So we're focusing on that tomorrow. Category B and C under shorter transactional texts. Okay. Um, so the exam will contain one question from each of the three categories listed, okay? You will only have to choose one of the questions, okay? So you will have plenty to choose from, okay? But obviously it's important to uh, know and understand the ins and outs of each text, okay? So yes, so that will be that. So I don't see any questions. All right, so for those of you guys who came in a little late, uh, so we are moving slots, okay, as of tomorrow. So tomorrow we will start our lesson at 9 a.m., okay? So we will have our English lesson at 9 in the morning, not at 2 o'clock. So please do wake up. Uh, and um, so you can wake up two minutes before. So just make sure that you are ready. Okay, so we will be having the lessons earlier. Okay, 9 a.m. So I do hope to see you guys all fresh and ready to tackle your day. Okay, so please remember to tag us on the socials. Okay, so we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So these would be the, um, so yeah, we, we've got uh, at Africa Teen Gigs, uh, hashtag lockdown eSchools, hashtag Sassel Foundation at DBE underscore SA. So please do uh, join, okay? I know it's a bit early, but we do go to school. School that started eight, okay? So nine o'clock should not be a problem at all. So let us meet back here at 9 a.m. I will be ready to dish yet another exciting English lesson. 9 a.m. tomorrow. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, remember, if we want to 
catch the listen live. Let's just make sure that we uh, we join at exactly nine o'clock tomorrow. Okay. Thank you guys and have yourself a blessed afternoon.